for the past couple months, we've been working hard to get Atticus ready to be our floating home as we attempt to live in nature and away from civilization. And we are so close to beginning this new life together as a family. But now that we've hauled the boat out of the water, it's time to take on some of the toughest projects on our list before we can finally set sail once again. Let's see if I can do this without destroying this thing. We are about to have a hole in the boat where we didn't used to have one. Hi, are you having fun? <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I am going to install the seacock, install the through hole. Oh my God, this thing is literally breaking. <laughs> this is going to be replacing our old shaft seal. I need to remove these slats. We got the water maker here. So obviously we're going to have to build a shelf. Come on, you can do this, Jordan. It's time to get messy. Yes. Okay, welcome to the boat yard. It's kind of funny, like boat yards, they're kind of nasty places, right? Like I can smell bottom paint dust in the air as we speak. I could also smell like maybe grease and fumes, right? Like it's kind of nasty, it's dirty, but there's a part of me that just loves boat yards. And maybe it's because I feel like I've spent about half of my life at this point in boat yards. <laughs> it sucks to be in the yard, but in a way it's liberating because it's an easier place to do boat projects. So I'm pumped to be here. So there's a couple of projects that really need to get done while we're on the hard. And the first one that I'm gonna tackle involves a leak that's going on at the shaft seal. It's not a big deal, there's not a lot of water coming out, but what it's doing is it's salt water and it's getting flung all over the engine bay and it's starting to corrode a lot of different components inside the engine bay, which is a problem. So I am going to be replacing that shaft seal and it's gonna be a little bit tricky to actually do because on this boat, we can't actually pull the prop shaft without pulling the rudder out of the boat, which is kind of a huge deal. But I think if I take the propeller off of the shaft, that we can actually pull the shaft aft enough up until it butts up against the rudder to have room in the engine bay to actually pull that shaft seal and replace it. So you might remember from last time that it's really important that I note where the little dot on this housing lines up with the gears inside because that corresponds with a letter that's written on the gears. And so that's something that's important for reassembling that we line that up exactly the same way so that we end up with the correct pitch ultimately of the blades of the propeller. Okay, so I'm really crossing my fingers that this much space is the amount of space that I need inside the engine compartment to be able to get the old shaft seal off and the new one on because from here to here, that's all I'm gonna be able to move this shaft aft. So now I'm gonna head into the engine compartment and try to uncouple the shaft flange from the transmission flange and then I'm gonna have to try to get the shaft off the flange. I enjoy working in the engine compartment for multiple reasons, but the main thing is I get some real quality time with my knee. It's been a long time, knee. You and I, we've just been a little bit distant. You've been way down there, I've been way up here. All right, got my hammer, got my chisel. Let's see if I can do this without destroying this thing or <laughs> denting the metal. I feel like I can hear people out there watching this being like, Jordan, don't do that. You're gonna scar the surface. It'll totally screw everything up. But I'm just gonna be really careful, I guess. All right, see, I told you. I told you it was gonna be fine. Okay, well, of course it's not budging. I've cranked on this puller as much as I can. That I feel like is not unusual at all. I got my trusty PB blaster. It's a penetrating oil. I'm gonna spray PB blaster all over this thing, particularly in these holes where the set screws were. This penetrating oil works best if you kind of leave it for a while. So I'm gonna really fill this thing with penetrating oil and just let it do its thing. Okay, well, while I'm waiting for that PB Blaster to do its magic, I'm gonna give Desiree a call. What's up? 
I'm so tired. And Issa is over, over tired. Is that dad? What's up, baby? Is that dad? Hi. Oh. Hey. What, what's up, Oso? Mm -hmm. Hey. All right, I'm gonna go. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye, Bye, baby. Bye. <laughs> okay, let's see how we did here. Yeah, I think it definitely budged. Yeah, we're definitely moving. Nice. PB Blaster. What, what? It's feeling like it's getting a lot easier. So I think we are moments away from actually getting this thing off. And by moments, I mean maybe another hour. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. My back's starting to really not be happy with me. Oh man. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to call it quits. My back is just killing me. End of day one, I'm a little behind schedule. I was hoping to have the old shaft seal completely off by today. So not quite, but until tomorrow. All right. Home sweet home. Let's finish this thing. So I got these longer bolts. I'm going to try to use this socket as a little spacer to press the shaft out of the coupling. And so yeah, I'm gonna use these two bolts to basically just compress the two flanges together and see if that socket will push the shaft out. Oh, something just loosened up. Ugh. I think we are almost there, man. Been saying that for what, like since yesterday? Hey! Okay, there you have it. So that is the shaft seal removed. Well, I got some bad news. I was able to figure out what was causing the leak and there seems to be some like lines of corrosion on the shaft. I don't know what that came from, what caused it. There's several of them at different positions. The point is that the corrosion's fairly deep, so I definitely can't sand it out. So ideally, the thing to do would be probably to just replace the shaft because if there's any important part of the next shaft seal that contacts any of those lines of corrosion we're going to have leaking again right because it'll just scar whatever seals there are in that device i'm not quite sure what i want to do i really want to avoid being in this yard any longer than we have to be because it's almost may so we're getting into the really good sailing season in the mediterranean so i've got some thinking to do to figure out what the heck we're gonna do to deal with this situation. Okay, so after doing some deep soul searching and talking to some of the really like helpful and knowledgeable workers and employees here at the yard, I was able to kind of figure out what I think happened and come up with a plan. As for what happened, I think that the boat before we bought it sat around a lot. It wasn't sailed very much. And so the salt water would sit against these O-rings in the shaft seal and just not move at all. And so that salt water pushed against these O-rings at that same spot in the shaft over years or you know, for however long it would just sit there would make some corrosion occur on the shaft right along the O-rings in the seal. So for sure, that was the source of the leak. There was corrosion on here, so the water was getting through here. So, I mean, replacing the shaft seal was definitely the thing to do. Now, what I think I'm gonna do is the, the new shaft seal that I'm having come, which is not a PSS made by PYI, but it is a last drop dripless shaft seal. It's a little bit of a different construction method and just design. And so the important part, the part that seals against the shaft, is going to be a little bit further forward than the PSS shaft seal. So what that means is that the important part, the seals, shouldn't be where those little imperfections in the shaft are. It should contact clean, good shaft. So I think that should be fine. That should work on its own, just period. As I had mentioned before, the ideal solution here would be to replace the shaft entirely, but I'm gonna wait to do that for about a year from now when we haul out next and I'm gonna pull the engine, replace all the insulation in the engine bay, and that's when we can pull the shaft and replace it. So this just needs to hold 
for another year. And so we're just going to clean up those little scars or bits of corrosion, and then we're actually going to fill it with Belzona, which is basically, I mean, they call it a chemical metal, it's just like a filler for metal, right? It's like JB Weld, I think, or something like that. So I'm going to head down there, clean up the shaft with some high grit sandpaper. I'm gonna scuff up and prep the corroded areas for this filler, and then I'm gonna apply this filler. Okay, so that's it. Now we just let that cure, and then tomorrow hope that it uh, filled it good and we'll sand it down. Time to switch gears a little bit. I'm gonna let that filler that we put on the shaft dry and cure fully and now I'm gonna start working on basically what is the other main project that we need to do while we're on the hard and that is to install this intake through hull for the water maker. So basically this is going to allow salt water, raw water from the ocean, get to the water maker so that it can make fresh water out of it. Now it's always kind of a bad feeling when I know I need to drill a hole in the hull of the boat. I just, I don't want very many holes in the hull of this boat, right? Like we wanna minimize the number of holes, but this water maker really ought to have its own dedicated seacock for the inlet water. This seacock, I got a backing plate with it, really nice backing plate, and this is meant to be epoxied onto the hull. And so I'm gonna prep the hull area Area where this is going to epoxy. I'm gonna have to grind away the gel coat and get down to fiberglass. Okay, well, I have ran out of excuses. I have triple checked the measurements. I've just got to drill this hole through the hull. So I want this hole to be perpendicular to the shape of the hull. Now, there's a lot of imperfections in the shape of the hull on the inside, which is why ultimately I'm just gonna drill a quarter inch hole this way to ensure that it's in the right spot on the interior. And then I'm gonna go outside and drill from the outside with the hole saw. Okay, so pretty darn close. I mean, that's like an inch and a half away from where I thought. Yeah, so let's see just how perpendicular it ended up being. Oh yes, that turned out really good. <laughs> well, we are about to have a hole in the boat where we didn't used to have one. Oh God, okay. Wow, that is a very thick hull. That makes me feel good. An inch and a quarter of fiberglass here, just forward of the keel. That is freaking strong. Sweet, that's gonna work. Okay, so for this next step, I kinda need two people. I need myself and one other person so that I can epoxy in the backing plate of the seacock against the hull and then have somebody down here thread the through hull up into it just to make sure that it's in exactly the right position. And so I'm bringing in the ringer. You ready, bud? Let's do it. I still cannot get over having a baby in a boatyard. <laughs> All right, so now I've got to mix up some epoxy, wet this out. I'm gonna wet this base out, put it into position, and then Desiree will help me center it. Okay, get ready. Okay, ready. God, so there's a lot of epoxy coming down into the hole that I wasn't anticipating. So I gotta clear that out before we put the through hole in. Hi, are you having fun? Okay, bud, push it outboard like the teeniest little bit. Okay, hold it there for now. Great. Yeah, that looks good. What's up, fun? Yeah, you like epoxy? Okay, we're in position. So just let that cure and uh, we should be good to do the rest of the installation. Yeah, so how do you feel about that? 
being what stands between us and the deep ocean. Very safe. I know. I was checking that out and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like it. What do you think, Isa? Does that look thick enough? It's thicker than your little hands. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we are in our Airbnb. It's Sunday morning and Jordan has had a really long, tough week. We're taking the day off, so I'm just gonna spy on Jordan reading Issa, her morning book. I just love watching them together, it's so sweet. You are so dear to me. Very sweet and oh so kind. Look at your little drooly mouth. I know, we need Can to... we get a clean up in aisle one, please? <laughs> yeah. Are you the prettiest baby? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Issa. Paddle, 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 paddle. <laughs> paddle, 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 paddle. It's coming. It's coming faster, faster, faster. Okay, pop up. Yeah. Good job, baby. You oh, caught the wave. Sure. Got my two babies. Oh, is Oso on you? He's nice. Nice. Yeah, you gotta pet him nicely like this. What you got there, bud? Oh boy. Some ribeyes. These are Argentinian ribeyes. And then got some chicken. Chicken. Dude, how good does that look? <laughs> I started at like one o'clock. I think it's 4.30. Yeah. I don't know how it took me that much time <laughs> to cook these things. What do you got going? I got some grilled vegetables, just some mushrooms and onions, and then we got a salad. So I think we cooked enough for like seven people. I know. <laughs> you might not know it from how little I've accomplished in the boatyard so far, but the last week has just been a lot of work for me. Like I've been going nonstop. There's a lot of stuff that I do and plan that doesn't really end up in the videos. And so today, this has just been so fun. Yeah, she likes having you here too. She gets so happy when she sees you. It's fun to watch her. You love dad, don't you? Yes, you do, little Jordan. Yeah, you gonna be a sailor, little baby? Yeah, are you looking at the YouTube people? Say hi, people. <laughs> baby, this is how mm -hmm. you eat meat. Oh. Want some chicken? <laughs> oh, good job. <laughs> Was it good? Like, I think I'm gonna stick to your hand for now. <laughs>